What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with another partial products multiplication lesson. Today we're going to be focused on doing two digit by two digit multiplication by using our distributive property knowledge. So let's split it up and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to find the product of two digit by two digit multiplication problems by understanding how to use the partial products method of multiplication. But before we really get into partial products, let's take a look at what this multiplication problem looks like when we use our distributive property knowledge. So here we have 38 times 24, and we can read that as 38 groups of 24, right? Because multiplication is repeated addition. So here we have a giant array right here, right? So we have 38 columns, and we have 24 in each of those columns, thereby 38 groups of 24, right? Because when we're doing multiplication, we're trying to find the product, which really is the total of the entire array. So what we're actually gonna do here is we're gonna split it up using our distributive property knowledge, except now we're actually gonna have four groups. I'm gonna color code them for you right now. So you see right here, I have my green section, and this is gonna be 30 groups of 20 in each. And then down here in my blue section, I have 30 groups of four in each, okay? So I'm decomposing actually both of my factors into smaller groups to make this easier. And in my red section, I have eight groups of 20 in each. And in my yellow section, I have eight groups of four in each. So let's take a look, let's split this apart and break this big array into smaller arrays, which is what the distributive property allows us to do. Look at that wonderful animation, right? So here we, again, I just labeled that we have 30 groups of 20 for my green section, we have eight groups of 20 in my red section, 30 groups of four in my blue section, and eight groups of four in my yellow section. If you notice, I broke it apart using my tens and ones place value to make this multiplication easier. So now I have four parts, and if I find the product of each of those parts, that really means obviously I'm going to be multiplying to figure that out. So I'm gonna have 30 times 20, 30 times four for my blue, eight times 20 and eight times four. And I need to find the product of each of those parts or a partial product, if you will. And you can see right there, my green section has 600, my blue section has 120, my red section has 160, and my yellow section has 32, right? So those are my four partial products that I just found by using my distributive property. But to find the total of the whole array, I need to bring them back together, right? So I need to add 600 plus 120 plus 160 plus 32, right? Adding each of those partial products. And that is going to give me a total product of 912, right? So this is what it looks like visually when you have that big array, that big multiplication problem, and you've split it apart into smaller groups, right, using your distributed property. Let's take a look at this same problem, but what it looks like mathematically. All right, so just like we talked about in our last video with two and three digit factors by one digit factor, we wanna make sure that we line up our factors vertically. It's gonna make it easier to transition into other ways to multiply. All right, and just for those visual learners, I color coded it so you could see what we just did with the array. I labeled the place values the same colors here, right? So now that we have them lined up vertically, right? We're just going to break them apart the same way that we broke the big array apart, right? So we had 30 groups of 20 in each. There we go. Then we had 30 groups of four in each. And then we had eight groups of 20 and we had eight groups of four. Right? So just like we split the array into four different smaller arrays, we're doing the same thing here, right? And you can go back and see the visual model if it helps you understand what we're doing. And then we need, just need to solve, hey, how much do I have in each of these smaller arrays? What is the product of my parts, right? So I have 30 times 20, that's gonna be 600. I had 30 times four, that's gonna be 120. I had eight times 20, that's gonna be 160 in that array. And then I had eight times four, which was 32. And these are all my partial products, so I need to make sure I add them back together to find the total of my big array. So my place values are lined up here very nicely, so I don't need to rewrite it. And I have two, two plus six is eight, plus three is 11. One plus six is seven, plus one is eight, plus one is nine. And my product of 38 times 24 is 912. 
So now you've seen it visually, you've seen what the math looks like. Let's take a look and name the steps that we just did. So if you did the last lesson with us, uh, these are the same exact steps, but if not, go ahead and write these down in your notes. Our steps for partial products. Step number one, line up your factors vertically. That just helps you transition to other ways to multiply easier. Step number two, use the distributive property to decompose your factors using their place value. Step number three, multiply all the parts in the bottom factor by the parts of the top factor. And then step number four, once you get those partial products, add them all back together to find the total or the product of your multiplication problem. Let's take a look at a we do problem and put these steps into action and write them down in your notes. All right, so here we have 49 times 67. I'm gonna use my commutative property just to put my bigger number on top, um, just something I like to do. And we're gonna do 67 times 49. So if we had an array, we'd have 67 groups with 49 in each. And we wanna split that apart into smaller arrays to help make the math a little bit easier, all right? So it doesn't matter which order you multiply, as long as you multiply all the digits in the bottom by all the digits in the top. Typically though, I like to start with the ones place. So I'm gonna do nine groups of seven in each, right? And then I would have nine groups of 60 in each, all right? And then I now I'm gonna go to my 40 and I have 40 groups of seven in each, and I have 40 groups of 60 in each. So I just split my big array into these four smaller arrays. So I'm gonna find the product of each of these parts. Now I put parentheses around these. Um, you don't have to, just depends on what you wanna do. Parentheses just in math, right, means to group. So I'm finding these smaller groups, I'm grouping these parts together, and then I can add them all up at the end. So nine times seven is 63. Nine times six is 54 plus a zero be 540. 40 times seven, or 40 groups of seven in each would be 280. 40 groups of 60 in each would be 2,400. Now I did it this way to show you, my place values aren't lined up right here, okay? So the hardest part about multiplication is being neat, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna write down all my parts again, making sure that I line up my place values. And you can see that I have my ones place, my tens place, my hundreds places, and my thousands places lined up. So now all I need to do is add my partial products back together. Eight plus four is 12, plus six is 18. Regroup your one. One plus four is five, plus two is seven, plus five is 12. So I regroup over here. And all my partial products are all my smaller arrays that I just made and solved, right? When I put them back together, give me a final product of 3,283. All right, so you've seen the steps in action. We have one in your notes. Let's go ahead and do a U-Try problem. So the way our U-Try problem works, you're gonna pause the uh, video in a second. You're gonna try the problem and then push play to check your work. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. And if you don't know how to do it yet, you don't feel comfortable, that's all right. You can do it with us as another we do problem. Make sure you get another example in your notes. So go ahead and pause it and then push play when you get done. So hopefully you just paused it. And here we have 23 times 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to line these up vertically. So I know if I, again, if I'm visualizing this, I have a big array with 23 groups and 15 in each. And again, I'm gonna start right down here with my ones place. And I'm going to split this apart by doing five groups of three and then five groups of 20. Then I have 10 groups of three in each. And then I have 10 groups of 20 in each. There we go. And now I just need to solve, right? Just like I, if you're visualizing this, you just made four smaller arrays, just like our video at the beginning of the lesson. We need to figure out how much we have in each of these parts, and then we can add them back together. So five groups of three would be 15, five groups of 20 would be 100, 10 groups of three would be 30, and 10 groups of 20 would be 200. Again, my place values aren't lined up, so I'm just gonna come over here. I'm going to rewrite my partial products that I just found, and I'm going to add them together. And I'm going to find that the total product of 23 times 15 is 345. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, if you go back and rewatch the video, try that. You can always go back to our previous lesson on how to do two and three digit factors by one digit factors. But remember, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. So. Our key takeaway from this lesson, right? When we use the partial products method of multiplication, 
we are really using the distributive property of multiplication to help us break our factors into smaller parts, right? We're taking a giant array and we're splitting it into smaller arrays to help break down the math, make it a little bit easier. And then at the end, we take those partial products and we put them back together. Thank you so much for checking us out. We know there's lots of different options online for help. We appreciate you watching us today. We would love for you to subscribe, like the video, comment, let us know where you're watching from. Check out all our other videos and songs and lessons. Again, we love to have you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Instruct Boot out.